here's a straight statement for you today on Minute with Maxwell. Hi, John here. I often teach people this statement. If you don't try to create the future you want, you must endure the future you get. Hmm. I, I, either, I either lead intentionally, or as my friend John Cotter so beautifully said, he said to me one day at a conversation over lunch, he said, John, most people, they don't lead their life, they accept their life. If I accept my life, I'm not creating my own future. I'm just enduring the future that comes to me. But the moment that I become intentional, the moment that I say, I have a choice, I can make a difference, I don't have to become a victim, the moment that happens within my life, I begin to create a better future for me. So the question is, do, do I wait for good things to happen? Well, if I do, I'm just accepting my life. Or do I work for good things to happen, which means I'm intentionally taking action to do my very best to make the best out of something that isn't so hot. I hope that you no longer wait for good things to happen for you and to you. I hope you begin to intentionally work to make them happen. Thanks for being with me today on Minute with Maxwell. Welcome back to Hope Christian Leadership University, our Leaders Conference for 2020. This will be session four. Going back with Brad Lumenick. Uh, I do want to point out this is the last class you can miss and still get in on this. Uh, leadership conference. We will be having another one the first weekend in October. So, uh, what we're trying to do is get the churches in East Tennessee leadership to unite with one another to improve the culture around us, around our cities, around our community, around the state, the nation and the world. All right, as we do before every class at HCL University and any event that we do, we go into praise, worship, prayer, and meditation. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand together. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you are ready for a life-changing day? <laughs> hey. How many of you would say you're not ready, but you could get ready? <laughs> uh, we're so glad you're here. We're going to have uh, such a wonderful I time. I do that for you, Jake. We've got a lot of stuff planned for get today that uh, we really believe that God is involved in. And uh, so let's uh, let's set our hearts just to enjoy the Lord. Shh. There we go. The international word for shut up or something like that. Yeah. There we go. Perhaps the greatest privilege that we have is to be a living offering yeah. where we give ourselves to him completely and fire always falls on sacrifice so we actually attract the invasion of God every time we just turn our hearts to him and just give him honor, give him thanks, give him praise. We've got a wonderful team that's going to lead us in worship in just a moment but uh, before we do that you just have, I don't know if you know this but you have world-class people standing all around you. And I think it would be great if you just turn, you met them, bless them, and we'll get started. Bless you. Bless you. World-class. Bless you. 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 Bless you, man. Bless you.
of the organizational world has there been these realities of four generations in the workplace and the gap is way wider than even 50 years ago. Brad Lomanek dives into key principles for building a thriving organization. Build authentic organizations 
today. Earlier, actually, several people asked me, Brad, what books do you read? Um, what are the podcasts that you listen to? So I think we have a couple of slides. I just put these together because I thought it would be helpful. Now, there's a lot there. So just take a picture of it. Um, I don't know if you can write them all down in the next 20 seconds, but these are these are the only leadership books, by the way. This is just, if somebody says, where do I start? What should I give my grandkids? What would you recommend? Uh, it is weird that I put my own book in there, so hashtag, like, non-humble. Um, there is an H in there about humility. But these are just the ones that I feel like, if I'm going to give somebody a runway, and there's a couple of, actually several on this list that are not written by believers, so just fair warning, these aren't all Christian leadership books, but this is where I would start. Um, and again, there's many others besides this, but that's a good list to, to begin with. You guys got a pick of that? Are we okay? Leave it? Well, let me go to the podcast, and then we may come back. So here's the thing with podcasts. Who, who's a podcast listener or junkie? I, I'm a junkie of podcasts. And here's the reason. It's because you can run, you can do the dishes, you can work, you can work out, you can be on the lawnmower, and you can have things in your ears that are actually making you better. So again, for me, these are ones that are pretty much every week or at least pretty consistent for me to listen to. And not all these are Christian. Uh, so I'm not, I, I didn't start with, you know, the, the podcasts that have pastors and their sermons. That's a whole other segment. This is just specifically around um, you getting better as a leader. So I just wanted to give those to you. I can actually also give this to the team and they can email these out to you or send them to you, post them on the website, any, any number of ways that we can uh, go back. They just want to go back to the books real quick. And you can leave it up there for a few minutes. Here's what I want to talk about this afternoon is what, what, is, what is the now and really the next of leadership as it relates to all of you are walking into some kind of organization, right? Some of you lead an organization, some of you are pastors, some of you are marketplace leaders, some of you work in the nonprofit space, some of you are in the, the political landscape, you're in education, uh, but all of us are part of a team. And especially today, in regards to generational differences, hello, all of you who are in your fourth quarter, we love you. But there's a lot of 20-somethings that don't understand you. And then all of you who are in your 20s, all of the fourth quarters, -ers, they love you. But there's a lot of them who have no idea how to communicate with you. And never before, maybe we could argue, in the history of the world, but really organizational life, has there been these realities that four generations are now in the workplace, and they're having a hard time like talking to each other, understanding each other, because the gap between a 25-year-old and a 65-year-old today is way wider than it was 50 years ago, 100 years ago. And a lot of that's because of digital realities, it's because of everything smart today, the, the way we communicate is, has changed, so all that's context. So what I want to do is try to give you, hopefully, as many points around what does it look like for you, whether you're 25, you're 35, 45, 55, or 65, around leading today in organizations. Is that good? Are we okay? Um, and we'll start with this. I, I would say the new kind of leader is the aggregator, coach, mentor, and curator. The new kind of leader is an aggregator, coach, mentor, and curator. Compared to what used to be a boss, a manager, a supervisor, right? Nobody wants to be supervised anymore. I don't know about you, I don't. 
I want to be released. I want my team and the people I work for to actually come along beside me and coach me and mentor me while they're also kicking me in the fanny as we go. But some of us still think that the role of a leader is to just boss people. And if that's true, which it still is true in a lot of places, but if that's true, I can promise you there won't be a lot of young, up-and-coming, change agent champions for Christ that will hang around very long. Because they don't want to be bossed. They want to be inspired. They want to be released. And they, they want to be coached. They want to be challenged. Fair. But they, they don't, they're not looking for you to just manage them anymore. And so if, if you find yourself in a place where you're managing, man, that, that's a tough and that's a tough assignment. Managers, they look backwards and make sure things are good. We need managers, but leaders look ahead. Managers look behind, leaders look ahead. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between leadership today and leadership yesteryear? Uh, talking about the generational gap? Four generations in the marketplace right now. Yep. Uh, leadership used to be boss, manager, supervisor. Mm-hmm. Still true in many places. <coughs> but young people ain't going to hang around. No. And what's part of the vision of Hope Retreat Global? Tracking the young people, the next the young generation. It's the, the new generation is going to be leading tomorrow. Brandon, what's that question you were going to ask them that you asked me? I don't know. Yeah, and I answered it right. I've already asked it. You were sleeping. Who are you? Yeah. yeah. Whatever I say. I think Michael got it. I don't know. Who said a child of God? I did. Mm-hmm. I mean, Michael did too. Yeah. I said, I think I said very much the same thing, except different words. Who are you? <coughs> Who are you, Steve? Child of God. I don't know. What? Yeah. I know. What? The difference between who are you? And what is your calling? And what is your assignment? We don't have to answer that too. Huh? We answer that too. Who well, wants to know it again? <laughs> See if you still have it written on your heart. I'm going to tell you what's other. Right now, you do. everybody here is in school. This season, your assignment is school. School. Okay. Uh, I say me leading this organization. I'm sixty, almost sixty-two. Another four or five years. It's gonna be about time for me to change assignments. I think. No. 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 Yeah. No. Uh-huh. And then I would be kind of become like an advisor. Hey. You're next in line. Yeah. So, anyway, that's a different assignment. What's the difference between an assignment and a call? Assignment's what you give and a call's what you do. Yeah. Yep. The assignment you're in now is all about your call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. We promised the viewing audience that looked on last time that we would get the high points of the last session. We looked at leadership and technology, which I think is really cool. Yes, it is. We talked with April LaFrance. Yeah. Uh, I thought 
was a, I thought the last one we watched about Bart. There was, out. Dave, there was David. No, we watched two of them all the time. Yeah. There was one. They were short. April of France was our first one. Was, uh, she. Ah, uh, one of her main things was says. Watch out for pride. Yeah. Uh, Give all glory to God. Yeah. And don't get discouraged, and also don't get discouraged if things don't go. Well, let's go back to the first one. The first one was technology, Brian. Brian, yeah, we talked about time that. to become a moonshot factory. Yeah. And what was your moonshot idea? Motorcycle paint, it. Though. Yeah. That's right. Let me Listen see. Moonshine? Moonshot. Moonshot. Like shooting for the moon? Yeah, I get it. Thank you. Now I got it. Okay. Why don't you guys tell me about the moonshot factory? Well, I want you guys to start getting I, more and more. You told, me to, you told me to listen to my uncle, so. Yeah. Share with her. My moonshot technology was I wanted to create motorcycle paint that, uh, like, it's uh, computerized. Yeah. So you push a button and it changes colors and whole bunch. Cool. Yeah. You know, like say you wanted a picture of anything like Jesus' face. Mm -hmm. It would already be programmed in there through the computer. Yeah. But as you're going down the road, you can push a button and it'd be black and all of a sudden... Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What if it produced a picture like no picture you've ever seen? It that too. It could have its own AI technology in it. Well, uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then guys said... This is my buddies. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wouldn't it be cool if it blends in with the senior to your right? It's like, like a chameleon does? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Maybe it could, it, it could become a, a, a invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one big thing about leadership, and we're going to obviously get into it tonight, lecture. You have to see about individuals what God sees about them. What God created them to become. And share that vision with them. Hmm. Because we just said in this tonight's lecture, Managers look behind. Leaders look ahead. Not where you've been. Mm -hmm. Not what you are today. What God wants to make of you. Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> then we had, I forgot the gentleman's name. Dude, son. Yes. He talked about being burnt out. Uh, watch it yeah. Watch Seventy percent of pastors today are burned out and experience thoughts of just quitting. Mm -hmm. The first thesis of Thessalonians 5.23 was God speaking to him. Yes. Which tells him what? Uh, he was the God of peace. Right. Yeah, basically, basically sanctification. Yeah. Talked about uh, faithfulness and who he is. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in leadership you can be so busy being busy you lose focus of where you're going. going. Yeah. And you lose connection with God. Leadership is interconnected with God, with each of you. I found you can learn something <laughs> from every single person you come into contact with. There's no reason we can't lift up everyone we come into contact with. Okay. I wish you could join in more of this lecture tonight, but because of time constraints on uploaded videos, we're just uploading them to give you an example of one of our studies. But hopefully when we get done, 
when we uh, discuss the uh, lecture, we'll hit on the key points. All right, for our viewing audience, what have we got so far? I gotta go to the bathroom. I I find very enjoyable about how pretty much. Pretty much is, uh, he's got some good uh, explanation on really on how to be a good leader. I mean, how to. Oh, well, we are at a leadership. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But putting away that I really ain't thought about. Well, it's more about the employee than the leader to me. Um, an employee is no longer really an employee. Yeah. Team member. Or a team member. Mm -hmm. uh, but on this last note, the decline of the hierarchy. Uh, you can generally get the information that you need to solve problems at the bottom of the food chain. Because that's where people are in the know. That's the talk about group. Right. Uh, like, I, you both now are in management training. We start taking residents in. I need to know what's going on down there. Uh, I think I've made that clear. I know I have it. Back up. But his definition of that, wouldn't it be you would find out more from the residents. Well, yeah. I mean, you find out from me first, right. but you... That you are a resident down there. Yeah. But you're a management resident. Management. Right. Yeah. Um, a story came up tonight, just after dinner. Uh, the problem we had with Michael Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, What's problem? Everybody knows the story about me having them dig a hole. Yeah. See, yeah. there's not enough work up here for two men today. I said, are you having trouble finding something to do? So I, we found him a shovel and I said, I need a six foot hole wide, six foot long, and six foot deep over here on this mountain, which is nothing but shell rock. You dig down, well, you know. Yeah. They talked about that much. He came back in to apologize. As Steve at the time was in management. And it comes to find out, Michael Jr. told him then, I'll be I'm sure. going to get over on them. You just watch and see. Is that something I need to know about? Well, yeah. If you, well, you haven't seen a whole lot of it. But what this has to do with at the very fringe of the food chain, actual residents. I'll check with residents on the management too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes that might not be so truthful because the manager, the management. I know that. Yeah. That I know there's a problem. So, let's get in there and talk about it. Everybody's got something. We're all on the team. Yep. Uh, so, number one, we got to get rid of the statue of boss, manager, supervisor. We're all team players. I think we need to get rid of the term pastor. Even. You notice uh, Bill is called the team leader. senior leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely are more interested in the young generation 
of the four generations involved in the corporate structure right now. And the older, because those are the ones that we can develop uh, the way we need to. But I can, can, I, can I say something about that? Yeah. Kind of like Michael, I used to notice where he was coming into different... He was gaining like a little, uh, little higher... Before he left, he was getting up there. He'd be possible management. Yeah. Uh, I'd notice like he would go into your room and he'd be like, he would go there and he would ask what you wanted him to do for the day. And then see me in a different situation. I, before I talk to you, You're already I'm done. already thinking and knowing what needs to be done. Right. Now I check with you mm -hmm. and say, hey, I mean. Well, I mentioned uh, junior leadership development I did in Boy Scout camp. It was two weeks. You were out at that camping in a tent, and the leadership was way over the mountain. And you were set up in kind of cubicle tent section. And one group here, they had about six, seven, eight tents. And another group over there, they had six, seven, eight tents. And there's probably five or six of them. And you basically, it was the first time in Scouts that you didn't have someone say, all right, it's time to start cooking breakfast, guys. Time to get up. It's time to do this, it's time to do that. We got a bunch of boys that's not used to making decisions on their own. And I remember, and this went on the whole two weeks, the first morning was crazy because nobody knew what to do. So everyone went to the leaders and said, do you want us to start cooking breakfast? What do you think? <laughs> do you think it's time to start cooking breakfast at 11 o'clock in the morning? Did you think it might be a good idea to get up earlier? <laughs> Same thing for the period in a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Authenticity. Need an environment of trusting you. The twenty-somethings want to be a part of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they want to be in the conversation. Yeah, and the decision making. Well, there has to be transparency. They want to be a part of community, career, and cause. People now want to make a difference. Doesn't all of it kind of revolve around the environment? It's like uh, you become a product of your environment. If you're in crap, you're going to be crap. But if right. you're in an environment that's good, then you're going to be a leader. Right. <coughs> Number four, I really like because this is the way God told me to arrange this whole thing. Here, just even in the recovery ranch. The rise of the free agent. Now young people have more options. Many are already looking on LinkedIn. Yeah. The way we're structuring everything here is everyone, even when you go on the payroll, it's not a payroll, everyone's an independent contractor in the movement of the Holy Spirit of the Living God. Right. Everybody. So, it brings people in as a, we're all equals. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, you get what you produce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, number five. Constant connectivity. Well, I mean, you've got to be connected with uh, all the way down the food chain. All the way down, and, and, and always accessible. Kind of like being in constant connection with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like Christian principles. 
Yeah. Because anyone can just Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I can Twitter the President of the United yeah. States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I Twitter, Twitter any world leader. Well, I like what he said about Mark Zuckerberg. It's kind of like you're Mark Zuckerberg. You're the CEO. Yeah. But when I walk into the room, you're just as me. I can walk up to you and I can say, hey, check this is the idea I got. Let's, can yeah. we do this? You know, I encourage it. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's the way the body of Christ is supposed to be anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a hand farm. Yeah. Everybody's got a rope to do. Okay. You got talents, I certainly don't got. David's got talents, I certainly don't got. Everybody's given their talents to edify the whole body. Yes. And that's the way we have to keep to keep it. Number six, everyone is a content provider. You guys may have some crazy idea that I think is absolute lunatic. Well, I did that with my testimony. Yeah. Uh, but that may just be who knows what it might produce. Uh, membership economy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're all about. How the whole thing will ultimately be funded. Gary, membership. Have you even looked at the memberships? No, sir. <laughs> In the decline of the hierarchy. Well, we're about to finish this up. Uh, we're not going to come back to you guys for the uh, any more of the conversation. we got another 10 minutes to go on the lecture. But we'll see you at 12 tomorrow for the next class. I hope you're online on our live streaming video platform because tonight is the last night you can sign up for this study. We do have another leadership conference first weekend in October 2020. <laughs>